Good morning and a happy Friday. Welcome to today's episode of Catholicity with Mr. Norino at Home for Friday, June the 19th, 2020. Today is the World Day of Prayer for Priests. And it's the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. So a special shout out to all of our staff and students at the amazing Sacred Heart School in Sulacote, Ontario. The heart of Jesus is adored as a symbol of his threefold love, human, spiritual, and divine. In the Old Testament, this love is described as a father's love for his children or a husband's love for his wife. In the New Testament, the promise of living water, the Holy Spirit, is fulfilled in the pierced heart of the Messiah. Our modern understanding of the Sacred Heart of Jesus has been shaped by the visions experienced by St. Margaret Mary Alacoc in the 17th century. In modern times, the image of the Sacred Heart in the home has become a sign that the love of Jesus rules over the family. In 1899, Pope Leo XIII consecrated the world to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The designs of his heart are from age to age, to rescue their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. Let us pray. We'll begin today in the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glorify in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that font of heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, who in the heart of your Son, wounded by our sins, bestow on us in mercy the boundless treasures of your love. Grant, we pray, that in paying him the homage of our devotion, we may also offer worthy reparation. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, You are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on earth to be his people, his treasured possession. It was not because you were more numerous than any other people that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you. For you were the fewest of all peoples. It was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who maintains covenant loyalty with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and who directly repays with destruction the one who rejects him. He does not delay, but repays directly the one who rejects him. Therefore, observe diligently the commandment, the statutes, and the ordinances that I am commanding you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, the steadfast love of the Lord is everlasting on those who fear him. The steadfast love of the Lord is everlasting on those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The steadfast love of the Lord is everlasting on those who fear him. It is the Lord who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. The steadfast love of the Lord is everlasting on those who fear him. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The steadfast love of the Lord is everlasting on those who fear him. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us 
according to our iniquities. The steadfast love of the Lord is everlasting on those who fear him. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is from God, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Not Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son, the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in them, and that person in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. He continued, All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The flames depicted in the images of the Sacred Heart of Jesus are a beautiful illustration of Christ's burning love for us. And in the same way, the mascot of Sacred Heart School in in Sulacout is the Phoenix. And after the quenching fire Rising from the ashes, the phoenix will rise. So, the old name of the team, the Sacred Heart Heat, (coughs) excuse me, the old name of the team, the Sacred Heart Heat, the new name of the team, the Sacred Heart Phoenix, an evolution of the same idea. The flame, the power of change, of, of love, of rebirth. And that's what our readings really have to do with today. Those flames which illustrate just how intense and all-consuming the Lord's love is for us is probably one of the strongest reasons for the enduring popularity of this particular devotion. And in our examination of saints in the in the web series All You Holy Men and Women, We'll take a look at the Sacred Heart of Jesus as an episode all unto itself because the Heart of Christ is a devotion as a devotion to St. Francis of Assisi, as a devotion to Our Mother Mary, as a devotion to St. Anthony of Padua. It's its its own thing that is worthy of devotion. Today's second reading tries to capture the words in the same truth that flame captures in an image. 
In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. The son of God came to earth as a human being. He loved us with his own human heart and he wants our hearts to burn with that same love. He wants this love, our love for him and his love for us to be brought to perfection in us. Well, how does this happen? John makes that clear so well. We spoke earlier this week about perfection. We talked about the process. We talked about utilizing our gifts to work on being Christ-like and perfect in the eyes of the Lord. In, in order to progress from um, Delcy's question, why do we want to be like Mary and Jesus? Well, this is why. Because of our, our utilization of the gifts that we have. John makes it clear that he has given us of his spirit through the love that the Holy Spirit pours into us. We can learn to love people just as Jesus loves them and as he loves us. This doesn't happen overnight, of course, but as we strengthen our relationship with Christ, we're brought little by little into the perfect love that God wants all of us to show each other. This means that when you feel tempted to be critical of someone, but choose instead to be compassionate, it's a sign that Jesus' love is burning in you. When you reach out to help someone, even though you're tired, inconvenienced, annoyed, just, just burned out, it's a sign that Jesus' love is abiding in you. So as you contemplate on the Sacred Heart today, remember that His love for you isn't meant to end with you. Through the Holy Spirit, He wants to fan the flames of his love so that you can share it with everyone you encounter. Come Holy Spirit and draw me closer to the sacred heart of Jesus. Fill me with a burning desire to love everyone in my path. Let us pray. May this sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love so that drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I want you to pray for our, our diocesan priests. Pray for His Excellency Bishop Fred Cauley. Pray for all the clergy all around the world on this International Day of Prayer, of World Prayer for Priests. They guide us in our mission to be Christ-like, they advise us, and they are important now more than ever when we cannot gather traditionally in our parish buildings. Tomorrow is the memorial of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So two big heart days in a row. I hope you have a lovely restful weekend as you prepare for the last week of school. And it's Heart Weekend. Happy Father's Day to all of us fathers out there. And we'll see you next week.